Hi guys, so something different today, a little break away from the cemeteries and graveyards. So this is known as Victor's Way uh, Roundwood Wicklow. And it's, some of these sculptures are not for the faint hearted. But we'll have a look anyway. There's some very creepy ones inside as well. So this is dedicated to the peerless Alan Turing, inventor of the Universal Machine. This is a sculpture of Eve. Eve represents the mature woman, life-giving, loving, caring and aspiring to upgrade the quality of her existence by acquiring knowledge. This is Lord Ganesh, the most popular deity of the Indian pantheon. He is worshipped by more than 600 million Hindus all over the world as the supreme problem solver and bringer of good fortune. Ganesh is the remover of all obstacles. This is Hanuman. Of all the many Hindu deities, the monkey god is the most popular. He incorporates all of the most life-supporting attributes, such as wisdom, strength, courage, compassion, devotion, perseverance and self-discipline.
In ancient times, both in Egypt and in India, the cobra symbolized the feminine principle of life, namely wisdom, fertility, wholeness and chaos. In short, unlimited creative potential. Here in Victor's Way, the cobra has been given a throne, which serves as a wisdom seat. All alone, the one or mother waits prior to movement and limitation. Though virtually whole and complete, her true potential is incomplete, because though omnipresent, she remains unidentifiable and unreal. To acquire realness and form, she creates another to serve as a reflective touchscreen. She creates the other by generating an identical but transient copy of herself, a painful procedure. In short, the countless others, which the one or mother creates, operate as if we're like interactive pixels. All the pixels together, that is to say the observable universe, are the one's virtual creative potential made real and identifiable. The Split Man The split human sculpture represents the awful mental state of the undecided, therefore dysfunctional human. He is in bits because unable or unwilling to dedicate his or her life completely to one goal. Consequently, unable to create and experience his or her true self. Failure to make that goal an actual reality results in unhappiness, indeed depression. Achievement of the goal is signified with happiness. The awakening. The infant emerges into reality. Since its responses are as yet undeveloped, it is totally overwhelmed by that impact. Because the initial impact is absolutely real, it is also perfect. The rotting fist represents yesterday, the decaying past. The infant represents tomorrow's promise. Fairy man's end. The fairy man's craft or skill lies dead in the water. Unable to move, he can't reach and touch it. He can't become real, identified, energized, and joyful. Thus he fades and dies. The fairy man's end is a metaphor for burnout. At burnout, an individual senses loss of realness, of identity, and of energy, which in turn results in depression and unhappiness. The ferryman's true craft is his or her capacity to create new contacts. Hence, new moments of difference. Anyone who creates difference and so generates realness and new ability, thus consciousness, serves all as a true ferryman.
Dark Night of the Soul The fasting Buddha sculpture represents the most intense phase of problem solving. Some experience this phase as a dreadful emptiness, others the spiritual. As the dark night of the soul, everyone goes through this unhappy phase to reach the joyful white or golden light that shines forth at goal achievement. Stone mounds which you see around you are called stupas. They represent Buddhist burial mounds in which the relics of the Buddhist saints are enclosed. The Nirvana man has solved this problem, namely the cause of his suffering. In the process getting a lot wiser, his goal attained. He's enjoying a blissful, cool peace. The suffering caused by the turbulence resulting from his unresolved problem has ended and he feels relaxed, indeed lighter, brighter and happier too. Victor's Way was built by a German-born man, namely Victor Langheld. He spent 30 years in India, became a Buddhist monk, came to Ireland and created this beautiful place known as Victor's Way. finger points to the basic law of life, namely, create or die, or as is said, in order to live, I have to die. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. 
God bless. And I'll talk to you soon.